What's going on top 10 nerd family and welcome back. The Joker is a wild character with many wild moments. Some a bit more shocking than others. He's a complex character after all, with the many versions of Joker being portrayed in film and comic books and TV shows. It was only a matter of time before we broke down 10 of the most shocking moments. So, in no particular order, here we go. Also, trigger warning, some of these moments are quite gory and not for the faint of heart. Number 10. Joker kills Randall. Okay, in the 2019 Joker movie, written and directed by Todd Phillips, we have Arthur Fleck in his apartment before his big TV gig on the Franklin Murray show later that night. He's then joined by his former colleagues, Randall and Gary. They came in, you know, just to check on the guy. They used to work with him, old friends. Let's do it. They question his face paint right off the bat by asking if he got a new gig or if he was planning on going to the rally. Arthur's like, no. My mom died, so I'm just celebrating. Okay, that's one way of celebrating a death. Randall then asks a few questions pertaining recent crimes. So Arthur, getting a little bit, you know, curious, keeps the conversation going a bit, stalling as he pulls out a knife from behind him, and then out of nowhere, stabs and kills Randall. Also, Gary was there, so it made us believe that nothing bad was gonna happen. Cause, you know, Arthur liked Gary. Who doesn't like Gary? And also, Gary at this point is out of the loop. So his shock of what just happened, with the whole situation is kind of doing the talking for us. He's terrified of what he just saw, asking Arthur, why did he just do that? And his answer was, do you watch the Franklin Murray show? Yeah, I'm gonna be on it tonight. The scene is chilling because he assures Gary so well that he can go free, even at one point pretending to lunge at him as he walks by just to be funny. This scene is one of those scenes where you can't help but chuckle in fear, like your jaws drop and you're like, huh, what is happening right now? You were the only one that was ever nice to me, Arthur says, before giving Gary a kiss on the forehead and sending him on his way. How lovely, I think. Number nine, the Lazarus Pit. So to save the world, you must save the life of your greatest enemy. Those are the words from Alfred as he and Batman prepare to toss Joker into the Lazarus Pit in Batman Legends of the Dark Knight issue 145. Using the purest water on Earth, Batman plans on tossing Joker into the Lazarus Pit to question him on the whereabouts of Talia and Ra's al Ghul. Knowing that the waters are capable for turning people sane for a brief amount of time. They plan to get Joker to spill the beans on the location in that moment. What a good plan, let's do it. So, while he's in the water, Alfred pulls out a gun to protect himself. But it's deemed unnecessary as Joker awakens. With his... sanity? Uh, excuse me? Yeah, it worked. And after a few confusing minutes of being awake, Joker tells the pair where they may be hiding. What do they do with the Joker? Well, they bring him along, of course. The three best friends that anybody could have. We're the three best friends that anyone could have. We're the three best friends that anyone can have. And we'll never, ever, 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 ever leave each other. Yeah, now that song is going to be stuck in your head as well. You're welcome. This moment was shocking because we find Joker reflecting on those who he's killed in the past. The dead, the dead. Sanity, such a burden, as Joker says. Eh, you can say that again. It's quite the burden. Number eight, dinner is served. In Death of the Family, issued October 2012, we find the Joker wearing a mask of his own face? Yeah, that's right, he used his face as a mask to, to cover his face. So he used, he used a face mask to cover his, his face, which was the mask, so, huh? The mask wasn't even good either. It was loose and flappy, and it was made of his rotten flesh. Kind of like old baloney. That was a gross image, sorry about that, last one. So what did he even do in the first place? Well, that's the point. While Batman was restrained to a chair, Joker had threatened to ignite the place up using gasoline. What a sticky situation. Literally, because his face. Okay, that was the last one, I swear. And just then, Alfred enters. Oh, thank God, a familiar face. But he's under the control of flesh face Joker. Never mind. The Joker then reveals that in front of all of Batman's allies, who are also at the nightmare dinner table, is their faces. What would you do if you woke up to this? Faint? Me too. Number seven. White Knight. This is a fun one. Imagine if Joker was the good guy and Batman was the bad. Okay, well in Batman White Knight number one, released in December 2017, we get to see this. Written by Sean Murphy, this story finds Joker as the hero. And this Batman is reckless. He's destroying the city just to get close to him. Once Batman gets his hands on Joker, the Joker tricks Batman into drugging him so that he can be sane again, becoming Jack Napier. So the Joker at this point actually outsmarts Batman. Ooh! He uses legal knowledge to convince Jim Gordon to arrest him for all this crazy stuff that he's doing just to get to him. This same Joker was still after Batman, 
So he used the Mad Hatter's control device to do a lot of his dirty work. Nightwing and Batgirl even joined in on the cause to bring in the Caped Crusader. This is a great version of Joker to see. Reviews for the story have been mainly positive. What did you guys think? Let us know below. Number six, Martha Wayne. Come again? Alternate universes are fun, Flashpoint specifically. So in this universe, Flash's mom is still alive, right? But other weird paths have happened in this universe to get to that point. So things are a little different in big ways. So in this universe, Bruce Wayne is the one who got shot, not his parents. Oh nice. So Thomas Wayne ends up becoming the Cape Crusader using guns and a splash of more violence while Martha Wayne takes on the mantle of the Joker. That's right, she immediately goes nuts after the death of her son and starts slashing up her own face, taking on the look of the Joker almost immediately. She knows Thomas Wayne, now Batman, would never kill her, so she uses that against him in the storyline. We actually caught a glimpse of this in the opening credits of Batman vs Superman released in 2016. Didn't anybody else find it odd that Lauren Cohen and Jeffrey Dean Morgan played Bruce Wayne's parents for such a small amount of screen time? They were pretty big actors and were even bigger at the time. Well, it was revealed that a Flashpoint movie has since then been in the works, so hopefully we get to see Zack Snyder's dream of casting Jeffrey Dean Morgan as Batman, and even better, hopefully we see Lauren Cohen taking on the role of Joker. She would probably get an easy Oscar nomination for it. I'll call it now. Check that date. I'm calling it. Number 5, Lois Lane Lives. Speaking of Batman vs Superman, whenever the two cross paths, it's usually a pretty epic time. So after Lois was poisoned by the Joker in Action 17, released in 1996, two years after I was born, so old, Superman is faced with the toughest choice. Joker had made it so in order to cure Lois from the poison, Superman must kill the clown prince of comedy himself. Batman reminds Superman of the tremendous guilt that he felt after he killed the Phantom Zone villain in the pocket universe. So we got ourselves a situation. So, Superman makes the hard choice but to let Lois Lane die. The Joker laughing all the while. So after her supposed death, she lets out a large gasp of air. The Joker starts laughing. So Superman and Lois now both have to deal with the fact that Superman would rather let the love of his life be killed rather than kill the Joker. See the Joker's always, he's always strapped, he's always got a plan. It's tough times man, sometimes you just gotta take the L. Number 4, The Killing Joke. Batman The Killing Joke, released in 2016, also made into a feature length animated film, is one of my favorite storylines. Let me explain why. So, after the Joker had escaped Arkham Asylum, his first stop was to hit up Commissioner Gordon's house, obviously. Barbara unfortunately had to answer the door. God. So, Joker fires a bullet that ended up paralyzing her below the waist. And after taking some pretty messed up photos of Barbara, Joker kidnaps Commissioner Gordon and forces him to go on a ride in this messed up amusement park that he's brought him to. And the ride isn't that much fun because as the ride goes on, Gordon is forced to see these horrible photos of his daughter taken from that night. What an absolute nightmare. I've been on roller coasters, but none have been that scary, I don't think. Number three, Joker kills the audience. Batman The Dark Knight Returns Part Two. So this moment mirrors what happened in the finale of the Joker movie, kinda. So Joker is invited on a talk show to get some insight behind his madness. Always a great idea. Let's get more of those guests on there. After being asked by the host why he's killed people, Joker explains how he's going to kill everybody in this room. And cue the panic laughs. Joker begins to explain that he thinks he's Batman's psychotic obsession. But then after asking about the lovely mugs that guests would get on these talk shows, the Joker goes, oh nice, breaks the mug and then stabs Dr. Bartholomew in the neck, who was aiding Joker for this interview. So it turns out the Joker was not that cured at all. And if that wasn't bad enough, he then murdered the entire audience with poisonous gas. Just a nice finishing touch. A plus. Number two. Killing Rachel. My favorite portrayal of the Joker is still Heath Ledger's. Now, I love the other versions, but after seeing this movie when I was younger and seeing Heath's performance for the first time, it was just surreal. One of the most shocking moments from that movie was when he made Batman choose between saving Harvey Dent or Rachel. And I, of course, had to include this in our list. This is a great moment. The build up to the scene and the character choices that Heath made to express the insanity of the Joker, so good. The scene of course doesn't end on a happy note, as we all remember, Rachel gets blown away to smithereens and Harvey starts to mentally decline after her loss, thus becoming the notorious Two-Face. And finally, number one, the Joker breaks his own spine. Mm, excuse me? Ever lean back in your chair at work and you kind of give it a bit too much? Ooh, gives you quite a oh my god feeling, it's not pleasant. 
Well, in the 1986 The Dark Knight Returns, we find Joker and Batman hashing it out. So while Batman is kicking his ass, he explains to him how many people he's let die simply by just not killing the Joker. I never kept count of them, says the Joker, and Batman responds simply with, I did. So Joker begins to stab Batman, and Batman twists Joker's neck. He's still alive enough to taunt Batman, still, somehow. Come on, finish me, he begs. Batman doesn't budge. So Joker decides, you know what, he's done enough. So the Joker decides to twist his own neck so hard, making it so that he himself has the final blow, thus now making Batman a killer. Well, there you have it, guys. Which Joker moment did we miss? Let us know down below so we can include them in part two. And as always, thank you for watching. And if you haven't already, click subscribe. And while you're there, just hit the notification bell. That way you don't miss any future videos. I'm Taylor McWaters. See ya.